Hi all. <clears throat> this is part one of making a transaxle in suspension components. In case you haven't noticed, there is a glaring fault right in front of your very eyes. You don't even notice it. Thank God. Um, I hollowed out the A arms so you could look up through them. I found out later you can't see them anyway. So, just a few little gesture, but I did it. Uh, the fault is I changed many discs, brakes in my life. And on the back of the car or truck or whatever it might be, um, they are, the caliper is mounted to the rear and towards the, either the middle or towards the top. Um, and when I seen Ravel's instructions, not checking my sources, I decided to put them to the rear. Big mistake is the C7Rs are in front. Trust the instructions there. I did not. Mainly because the windshield wiper was on the wrong side and there were some other little things that were wrong that I just felt they just kind of rushed through it and nope, it was me. My fault. Don't do that. Right now I'm marking out or making the um, actually the um, rear differential don't actually make the trans actually you can't see the tranny no matter how much you try to look you can't see it on the model I you can't get a picture of it on the internet I did get a picture of it on the internet but it's of a normal Corvette uh, normal C7 um, they didn't say what kind like was it a um, stingray or a lower you know lower costing one whatever it was it was aluminum frame so it's got to be a um, co6 so anyway by the way in case you didn't know um the c7r the racing shares many components of the normal uh, corvette the frame the engine is just highly tolerant engine uh, the rear I think the rear transaxle and everything's the same because he wanted it as close as they could to the real car anyway right now I drilled holes duh, and made grab some plaster struck tubing to make the rear differential housing holes or to accept the the axle rod that goes clear through from one end to the other to <clears throat> mount it to the frame and somewhere to set it, you know. It worked out quite well. Note, the discs are not painted on this because I finished them actually first. I do have a video of me making them, but I figured, eh, since I made the disc, disc break video, why goof with that? So, bore you anymore, okay? I made sure to put a marker on the tire on the rims of the tires for front and rear that way I always kept them separated uh, because the mods I had to do to the front no way worked on the rear on the um, rims because um, I had to cut those plastic stubs you see sticking out of them way shorter and inside so it fit in my disc brakes and made in front.
I love scratch building. Um, I like to see what I can make. I rarely buy anything. In fact, I hardly ever do except the seat belts. Um, I obviously, if I could make the plastic, I would, but I can't. So I have to buy the plastic sheet and all that uh, tubing. Anything I can get because you can make it out of rod. You can you can make like those tubing or what you've seen on the transaxle. You can actually make it out of flat stock, but cutting discs is not a lot of fun. It takes a while, especially that thickness. So anyway, I love it. I like doing it. Um, I get a lot of reward out of it, um, personally, and that, and I don't fault anybody who buys stuff, but I just prefer trying to make it see, see what I can do, you know. Trying to make sure they dried at a right angle. That's why I put those blocks of, I think they're for, what do they call them? Um, soapbox derby cars. My wife got them, thought I need, might need them. Actually, I use them quite a bit. kind of look like two snake eye dominoes, don't they? <laughs> Heavy babies. With the photo I had of the transaxle, um, there, it was round, flat on top, then it rounded down to a smaller in the front. And that's the back there, obviously. And uh, anyway, you'll see what I do here. I, I use those um, bending pliers. That, the, uh, that's the best tool I ever bought in a long time. I'm always on the lookout for tools, wire you name it especially electrical wire i tear apart earbuds man that's some hair wire that's some fine stuff i mean ugh. but it comes in handy on smaller scales and on this car i actually had a lot of trouble because i'm used to using smaller wire that i had to end up going on buying a little thicker wire and stuff like that because i'm used to 136 one thirty second, one thirty fifth, one forty eighth. I rarely touch one seventy second. Don't care for it. Don't want to go blind. You can see where I use that pliers to put a slight curve in the top. That way I didn't have to, um, it seem, just seems to work better if I don't poke myself in the hand with a freaking uh, exacto knife there. Probably dull, which is worse. I've been through a lot of blades here re lately. Don't buy cheap ones, buy exacto. They seem to last longer. Unless you know of a better blade manufacturer, let me know because, man, the tips break right away on them.
obviously if you haven't read this is part one part two will be coming out real soon um which has more of the finishing of it and that um, i'm still combing through some files because i had a miscellaneous file not knowing where to put it you know in the build length you know not thinking really and um so th there'll be if i find anything i'll put it in that or there might be a part three i don't know anyway i'm putting the ends on here to obviously cover up the hole come back and snip them off smooth them out i realize that where this is at it is very hard to see what uh, see it see it even photograph it was difficult after i made the model and i stupidly didn't take a photo of it in the car without the chassis on the the body on and that and uh, so sorry maybe i'll find something i don't know My wife gave me this Revlon sanding disc for her nails and I've been trying to buy an exactly one like that they're stiff enough and yet they're, they got like way down to polishing you can you can polish with the dang things because they're, they're, it's almost like feels like a paper on the other side those ladies go through a lot anyway um, I wish I could find another one of them I'll have to keep an eye out but Felt kind of weird going over the inner women's section and buying Revlon uh, sanding files. She gave me another one, but it's all puffy. You know, it doesn't work well at all. This one's flat, holds its shape. It's spongy enough to where it just, you know, it ain't like a solid one where, it, unless you need to straighten it up. Um, I use other things for that, but I like it. Right now I'm using, just to cover a little gap I had on the top, that um, Vallejo's uh, putty, uh, acrylic putty. And I wasn't trying to get anything smooth or anything, because if I put uh, Tamiya's on there, I'd be sanding forever. And I just needed something to put on, fill, fill a gap, and then scratch off with my fingernail. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, please, and comment.